Hey everybody, Dayo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We are along Hachiro Iba's route. Although at the moment we are uh, at that one of those points where Kazuma was trying to kidnap us. So we'll just hop right back into this. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Trust the Shinsengumi. I had decided long ago that I would trust them. The men of the Shinsengumi had far more experience and skill than I did. The safest thing for me to do would be to leave the situation to them. My eyes met Harada's. They were calm, confident, and warm. Oh, my darling, this belongs in his route. Even quite literally in the grip of the enemy as I was, his gaze made me feel safe somehow. It would be fine. I have taken care of the men at the gate. Man, this is all way too easy. I guess they are humans at the end of the day. Hey, look at that, Cosmo. You got her. Let's go. Indeed, the longer we remain, the more likely it becomes that the situation will escalate out of our control. Yes, you're right. Man, gotta say, I was expecting at least a little more from the Shinsegumi. You asked for it? Here it is. His laughter was cut short by Harada's spear. Whoa. Shironoi barely dodged the spear. However, the attack didn't end there. Harada attacked twice, three more times, trying to spear Shironoi. Care to repeat that? Oh, hello, Harada. Don't move, Chizuru. As he spoke, his spear shot forward, slipping through the air. <laughs> How foolish of you. You thought you could defeat me with this. Pay attention, you're fighting me, remember? Out of nowhere, Hijikata appeared, his sword already sweeping down toward Kazuma. <laughs> Kazuma had dodged the strike and intercepted it with his blade. I slumped to the ground as the Shinsengumi's combined attack forced Kazuma back. Don't move. Don't look up, no matter what. But what if I want to watch the fight? <laughs> his spear had nearly grazed the top of my head. Oh yeah, I guess I better keep my head down then. Bursts of frenetic swordplay filled my senses. Clearly, this was no ordinary fighter. It was clear that this was a battle between two insanely powerful men. Human filth. He brushed aside a second blow from Hijikata and a strike from Harada. Ah, oh, so they're trading off places too in this. You bleed when you're cut, right? So if I chop off your head, I figure you'll die too. Care to test that? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> the sound of steel on steel rang out across the compound. I was surprised that none of the blades were breaking. I failed to grasp human behavior. Why fight when you know you cannot win? Well, I think they're doing pretty well, actually. As he spoke, Amagiri moved toward Kazuma, but found Nagakura standing in his path. <laughs> oh, I think you've already got a date for tonight. I would rather not. But you give me no choice, it seems. Duh! <laughs> he would rather not. Come on, look at you two beefy guys. Hanging out together. Sounds like a date to me. Nagakura swung his sword as if backed by his entire body, and Amagiri deflected it with his arm. You are the guy who hurt Heisuke, right? Oh, I'm not gonna let you go until I get at least one good hit for him. I don't think that would make Heisuke happy. He wants to do the hit himself. What's the matter? You seem a little tired compared to earlier. Huh. I was just going easy on you, since you're barely worth my time. Hold on, you're mine! The tip of his gun drifted and weaved, trying to get in a good shot at Harada. Blow away! Won't let you. Man, Shiranoi's eyes look awesome like that. Ugh! Shiranoi lost his balance, greatly due to the spear being shot at him. Sorry, man. This close. My spear and your gun are pretty much evenly matched. Oh, Harada, you must really be wanting to get filled with holes. Kazuma, our enemy has regrouped. What are you going to do? Then we've had enough fun for one night. We can take her anytime we'd like. Kazuma put his sword away. I won't let you get away. Hijikata tried to have another swing at the demons, but... Kazuma and Amagiri disappeared into the night. Huh, 
Demons my ass. I'll bark and no bite. His arms hung at his sides, and the tip of his sword nearly touched the ground. Don't push yourself, Shin. You're short of breath. You idiot. I'm just playing it up to make the enemies lower their guard. But forget that. Shirunoi's still here. Nagakura glared, and where he looked, there was one demon left. Shirunoi. <laughs> You're a real kidder, Harada. Try to fight me with just that little old spear. Shirunoi gave an eerie smirk, and Harada's lip curled up. Looks like we'll have to settle this at a later date. Hopefully we'll actually be able to finish this next time. Oh, I want to fight until one of us dies. With that, he was gone. The demons disappeared, and finally the compound fell silent. Was it over? I felt my body go limp as the tension disappeared. Oh, why do we have to get Harada scenes now? I wanted to say though for his out. You okay? You did good. I looked up to find Harada's smiling face in front of my own. Harada... I stopped. If I said anything more, I was afraid I'd burst into tears, so I instead gave him a shaky smile. With a grin, he tousled my hair, and his touch pushed me over the edge. Oh, Harada, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just sorry I couldn't get to you sooner. No, no. You don't have to act tough. There's no way in hell you wouldn't be scared when a sword fight unfolds right in front of you. And above my head? But thanks. I was able to drive them off thanks to you. What? You see, at the end of the day, men are simple-minded. When they know a girl's watching them, they do everything they can to look cool in front of them. Harada. I think he was saying these kind words so that I didn't feel guilty, but... His subtle kindness seeped into my heart. At a time like this, where it feels like things will fall apart at any moment, it's hard to tell what's right and what's wrong, but... But even then, I think it's undeniably right for a man to want to protect a woman. His words reminded me of Heisuke and Saito's sentiments as they left the Shinsengumi. I wonder if their departure had cast some kind of confusion in his heart. A departure for a man who typically never second-guessed himself. But of course he's strong, and he would never ever show that side of himself. We did our best because of you. I'm not the only one who thinks that. Shimpachi, Kondo, Hijikata, all of us. We were at our best out there because of you. So, I don't want you thinking you're making trouble for us or something like that. Thanks, Chizoru. With a grin, he tousled my hair, and his touch pushed me over the edge. Thank you, Harada. Back to crying. After a while, I calmed down. Harada extended his hand to me, and I got up. All right, go back to your room. I'll walk you. Huh? But... Come on. Let me do this much, okay? Okay, thank you. He walked me to my room and I took a rest. After time passed to the following day... Good morning, everyone. Oh, can I skip? Yep, skipping time. Here's some new material. November, 1867. We had reached the halfway point in the month, and the weather was growing increasingly harsh as the chill became more frequent. Dusk had come after a short blustery day. Iba and Motoyama were visiting the compounds. I poured some tea for everyone. I tried my best to act with decorum as I handed each person their tea. But I'm so excited that my love is here! My, this place is rather large. It's quite a departure from the first headquarters you all used. We've grown a lot since then, but I suppose it's not a surprise to see from you, Toshi. How are you able to negotiate such a deal with the Nishi Hongwanji Temple to leave them? Hey, you're making me sound like a con artist. It's simple. They made an offer and we took it. Iba and Hijikata both smiled as they spoke. They looked like they were enjoying themselves. Here you go. I placed the cup in front of Motoyama and he jumped slightly. Don't be so nervous. Th thank you. This tea looks delicious. <laughs> it always seemed like Motoyama acted a little sheepishly, but he managed to smile through it. So, to what pleasure do we owe your company, Iba? Iba daintily dabbed a napkin to his lips, and then he spoke quietly. Oh, how proper of him. You see, 
We've received reports of some Kyoto guards acting belligerently as of late. I'd hope to gather more information, if you've heard anything. Kono and Hijikata looked at one another, both wearing a bitter expression. They both sighed heavily. Do you know of Ryoma Sakamoto from Tosa? Iba nodded. Supposedly, Sakamoto was a charismatic influencer who was active with domains in the western region. The rumors about him even said he was able to unite the Satsuma and Choshu together. And just recently, allegedly, he has played a large role in restoring imperial rule through the Tosa. From what we can see, he is a person for whom we have a great interest in apprehending, but it's not that easy. With regards to Sakamoto, the Shinsugumi men had been pursuing him for quite a while now. However, due to certain political pressures, he was considered untouchable in various parts of Japan. Why only various parts? However, it seems as though we aren't the only ones interested in Sakamoto. Yep, a lot of people are. Right. He made fools out of the Mimowari Gumi in their last arrest attempt, so I hear they really have it up for him. I see. Perhaps this is why the Mimowari Gumi have been looking rather depleted. He must be quite the popular man. Yeah, and I'm not sure if this guy knows what he's doing, or he's just a lucky punk. But Sakamoto is doing a number on the Shogunate. He probably won't stop at what he's doing until someone sticks a sword into his gut. Iba fell silent, concentrating deeply, and then he turned to face Hijikata. Toshi, if you ever learn of Sakamoto's whereabouts, I ask that you alert me with haste. If he is assassinated, there will be civil unrest. Of that I am sure. Even if the Shinzengumi were to warn him, I'm sure he wouldn't listen, so I'll do my best to warn him. Hitakata sighed and continued. You got a point. Eventually, Hijikata stood up, and he nodded toward Iba and Motoyama. Ori, follow me. I have an idea where he could be. All right. O okay. They all stood, Motoyama rushing to get up, and they left the common room. I had hoped everything would be okay. I was putting away the cups as I turned these thoughts over in my mind. Oh! I had noticed the bag left where Motoyama was sitting. Um, Kondo, look at this. Did Motoyama leave this behind? If I'm not mistaken, he's just around the gate, so why don't you take it to him? Alright. I rushed and followed in the direction Hijikata went. Are they gonna let me come with them? I had found them at the entrance. Um, Motoyama! Just as I was approaching them... Commander, I apologize for interrupting but I have news for you regarding the Mimo Arigumi. Yamazaki, who had come running from the opposite side of me, was speaking nervously. We were just discussing this. Fill us in. Yamazaki seemed unsure whether or not it was appropriate to veal his information in front of Iba or me as he nervously glanced toward us. Come on, you know you can trust me. I'm not buddy-buddy with him in this route. But he made up his mind and spoke. Over the past few days, the Mimuwari Gumi have been behaving conspicuously. We have reports of them recruiting high-level warriors, and it looks as though they're preparing for a major conflict. Major conflict, huh? What do you think it's about, Yamazaki? Yamazaki was about to answer, and then he stopped himself. He paused to think, then he finally spoke. I'm under the impression that it's an assassination attempt, and the target is a high-profile one, if I'm not mistaken. Could it be... As Iba began to realize the implications, Hijikata perked up and he began running. He must have been running toward the location in which Sakamoto was allegedly hiding. Yukimura, I'm going to report this to the chief. Please stay with the commander as a messenger. Hooray! I get to stay with Iba. Yamazaki gave a big gulp. Hijikata had already taken off running. Surely he must have realized that I couldn't possibly run after Hijikata alone. Iba, after watching the events unfold in front of him, offered a solution. I shall take the responsibility and protect her. I will also do my best to stop Toshi. This is all for the best, right? Yamazaki seemed slightly relieved that such an immediate solution came forth. Yes, please. I don't have a moment to lose. Motoyama, relay the information you just heard. U okay got it. All right, let's go, Chizuru. Okay. I don't see how this is going to help me work any faster. We looked toward one another and nodded. We were running in the direction toward which Hijikata had run off. How are we ever going to catch up to him, though? 
Around us was the darkened streets of Kyoto. I don't think we can save him if it's not his route. Somehow we had found ourselves in Omiya, but the place was filled with an assortment of people. It was so late, yet this place was still busy. That's suspicious. I was getting a bad feeling of it all, so I spoke to a passerby to find out what was going on. Um, did something happen? Supposedly there's been a the fight here. Swords slashing everywhere. Someone got hurt. Ah! Iba turned around. Oh, Toshi! We have found Hijikata a little distance away, and we ran toward him. What are you doing here? Hachiro is one thing, but you... Whatever, it's fine. It'll be good to have someone who can treat injuries, just in case something happens. Or has already happened? Hijikata was muttering to himself. Toshi, look. I think that person is with the Tosa. Eva was pointing toward a group of men dressed in samurai attire. They were commanding different civilians to make way as they tried to enter the store. Stay here, you guys. I'll check inside. Sounds good. Please be careful. Hijikata disappeared into the Omiya that was currently flooded with people. We had waited in front of the store for what felt like a long time. Toshi's taking a while. I hope nothing happened. Yeah, I don't like this. The longer we're waiting, the more time they have to kill Sakamoto. Eva looked as though he were growing impatient, and he cautiously gazed at the store. It had been almost 30 minutes since Hijikata had entered the store, but for us it felt like an eternity. It is an eternity when you're trying to rescue someone. Finally, Hijikata emerged from the store. Toshi, how did everything go? Iba approached Hijikata timidly, but the latter looked very distressed. He didn't have an answer. From his silence, we could pick up the pieces for what had happened. Even though he seemed bitterly disappointed, Hijikata began to open up. It seems like Sakamoto and Akalka were attacked. Sakamoto died on the scene, and the Kalka. He survived, but judging by how he looked, probably not for long. Oh, my beautiful, evil, misguided Nakalka. And my poor darling Sakamoto. <sighs> As Iba had suggested earlier in the evening, if Sakamoto were to be assassinated, then it would cause waves to ripple throughout the country. Then it must mean... Hijikata began giving orders, while I stood there having not the faintest idea what to do. I'm going to stay here to check the perimeter. I don't want to linger since I'll probably look suspicious, but I can't shake the feeling something's off. Hachiro, sorry to put this on you, but could you take her back to the compounds? Understood. Let's go, Chizuru. I nodded, and together, Iba and I headed back toward the compounds. Maybe we can go on a late-night date together while we're out here. Ah, there we go. You read my mind. Chizuru, are you hungry? Would you like to get something to eat? No. Yeah, this is kind of like a bad time. Now that I was thinking about it, I hadn't eaten anything since the afternoon, but I couldn't bring myself to eat right now. It seemed like Eva picked up on that much, at least. Our conversation stopped, and her footsteps echoed through the dark, empty streetways. When we reached the Kamo River, Eva stopped walking. I'm sure Kyoto will end up in arms now that Ryoma Sakamoto has been assassinated. The sincerity of his voice, given the current circumstances, made my body tense up. It was a little painful to imagine, but I was sure that he would be right in the near future. Are we going to war? Eva didn't answer immediately. We both watched as the moonlight hid behind the thick clouds above, and he stayed silent. I pressed on. Just like after the Ikeda Inn incident, when the Choshu attacked us, I wasn't too familiar with politics, but I felt the same anxiety now as I did back then. The Choshu became angry as a result of losing their retainer at Ikeda, so they attacked Hamaguri Gate. Then I knew something similar would happen. The uncertainty of it all made me feel so restless as we shivered in the cold Kyoto evening, but Iba continued to stay silent for a moment. This situation is a little different. Huh? Back then, the Choshu were tasked with protecting the Imperial Palace, so the Shogunate was victorious. Back then? What about now? Eva seemed unsure on how he should answer. But then, he decided to open up, 
even though his voice told me he didn't believe what he was saying. Because of the failure of the second Choshu expedition, the Shogunate's power is crumbling. They have practically handed the Choshu a reason to attack them tonight, and the Satsuma, who were siding with the Shogunate during the Hamagurta Rebellion, will likely back the Choshu and attack Kyoto. As Iba told me all this, I became speechless. This happened so quickly. Our lives were changing. Iba sighed, as if burdened by the suddenness of these changes, and he bit his lip tenderly. Kyoto may be at war once more. I don't know how many people will be able to fight by then. His words struggled to come out, as if encumbered by blood rising through his throat. No. I was surprised to hear Iba tell me all this, and I began to panic internally. Iba, you're an official guard of the Shogunate. Why would you think in such a way? Because he is a realist. He looked like he was fighting back tears, and he simply shook his head. It's not what you think. It's because I'm with the Shogunate that I know all this. Because the Choshu expedition was a failure, even the Tokugawa family domain is beginning to doubt the power of the Shogunate. A Hatamoto like me, or some of the lower-ranked vassals, aren't prepared for an actual war. So, after all this, I wonder how many vassals will come to the aid of the Shogunate. I don't know what I could say to Iba. I knew this was all tough for him to admit, especially because he was a Bakushin. But even then, it must have been something that came from his gut instinct. Ah, uh, you have the Shinsengumi. They're your friends, they'll stand beside you. You have the Shinsengumi. I said this under the clear light of the radiant moon as it crept from behind the clouds. What? And you have me, too. It seemed as though my comet caught him off guard. Eva's eyes grew wide as he stared at me. I know this because I've been with the Shinsengumi after all this time. I'm positive that they will risk all their lives to fight this war with you. No matter what happens, I trust them to fight until the bitter end. Silence returned beside the flowing river. He looked at me with a worried expression, then he sighed and closed his eyes for a moment. You're right. Unlike earlier, this time, it seemed like he was more at ease by the prospect. You're right. I'm sure Toshi will fight until the end. I sense great determination from all of them, something that lacks in the Bakushin. Perhaps this is why I find myself visiting them as often as I do. Of course, though, one of the reasons was because I wanted to see you. Iba laughed momentarily, then quietly turned to face the river again. That is a pretty river. The Shinsengumi are likely closer to what it truly means to be a samurai than any of us. He seemed to glow with a lot of respect as he said this, and I nodded to agree. Eventually, silence returned between us, and the only sound was the flow of the river beside us. Iba stared deeply at the moon, which at this point had inched away from the clouds and shone brightly above us, causing the river to sparkle in kind. Chizuru, get out of Kyoto as soon as you can. No! What did he say? His words shocked me, and I had been told to leave the Shinsengumi out of personal concern before, but... This time was different. This time, these words were backed by conviction. I understand this is a complicated situation for you, as you are very loyal toward the Shinsengumi while you search for Kodo. I know it's hard to decide immediately, but I think you should leave as soon as possible. Why does everybody keep forgetting that I'm being pursued by demons? Through the urgency in Iba's voice, I could sense just how much he cared about me. Of course, he had just said so himself earlier. But because he was so familiar with the internal politics of the Shogunate, I knew he truly believed that what he said would come true. So I should have taken him for his word, but... But I... Look, I understand what may be holding you back, but this time, it could cost you your life. If I could do anything in my power to prevent so, I would, but it's a promise I don't know if I can make or not. Or have you already forgotten about the time I was almost killed by Takeda? I jumped at the thought. What he said may have some merit. I'm fine, okay? I said so stubbornly, hoping he'd just drop it. What's fine? Although he wasn't raising his voice, I could still sense the coldness in his question. Perhaps he was becoming frustrated by my unwillingness to budge. Was he really irritated that I wouldn't just take his words at face value? If I get hurt, I'll just recover quickly, so it'll be fine. Suddenly, I remembered the moment in which Takeda called me a monster. 
Sure, I may be a little bit different from a normal human, but... Because of these powers, maybe I could be of some use to the Shinsengumi. Even I, without any battle experience, could do my part if the time ever came. It's not fine to me at all. Those were not the words I was expecting to hear from him. If you're going to be hurt, I'd rather be there in your stead taking the wound. Even if your cuts heal, the thought of you being hurt tortures me. I can't bear to see you in pain. So please, don't tell me it's fine if you get hurt. No matter what anyone says, you're just a normal girl. Oh, I could sense warmth welling in my chest as he spoke to me with such concern. I never expected him to care for me in the way he did. I'm different than a normal girl. Like Takeda had said, I guess I couldn't blame someone for thinking I'm a monster, but for Iba to see me otherwise. Tears began to form as my cheeks flared up. The closeness of our relationship made me blush with emotion, and the intimacy of his kindness drew me in as I watched him smile warmly. I was able to tell him a secret, all those years ago, that I couldn't share with anyone else, only him. I fought back the tears, and I shined the biggest smile I could to let him know how much it all meant. Thank you, Iba. I felt bad that I couldn't do exactly what he had asked of me, but... If something truly dangerous were to happen to me, I'll do as you say. He gave a small sigh. Boy, you sure do love worrying me, don't you? Fine. Then I'm going to protect both you and the Shogunate. After Iba sighed, he looked up again at the moon hovering above. Shortly after, his tone became a little more cheerful. Let's head back to the compounds now. I'm sure the both of us will be quite busy. And we return to Fudoro Village. After the assassination of Ryoma Sakamoto, the Shinsengumi were facing an even bigger situation. Uh, before November ended, the guardians of the Imperial to Wait, okay, never mind, we skipped there. But yeah, again, demons, people, demons. Every time you tell me to run away, who's going to protect me from the demons when I'm by myself out there? And here, I'll stay here. And now we are in Chapter 5, which means we are officially on Eva's route. It was the winter of 1867. The end of the year was approaching us. Iba had warned me not too long ago that I should leave Kyoto, but I had no time to make a decision. Kyoto's political climate had grown increasingly tense everywhere I looked. The threat of war loomed ominously as the shogunate and Satsuma Choshu prepared their armies. As a precaution, the Shinsengumi was ordered to guard the Fushimi Magistrate, which was being fortified as a shogunate safeguard in Kyoto. Kondo joined an envoy on a route to Fushimi Castle as part of a delegation to discuss key strategies when an attempt on his life critically wounded him. The assailant was a gunman, so we needed to perform urgent care on him immediately, and the captains waited anxiously for our updates. Yamazaki, any word on Kondo? His condition has stabilized a little, and he's asleep right now, but the wounds are more serious than we thought. However, we were able to extract the bullet. At the moment, this is all we can do for him. Our resources are limited here. Hijikata watched quietly, seemingly deep in thought, as he was listening to Yamazaki's report. Eventually... If it's a real doctor we need, Dr. Matsumoto is currently residing at Osaka Castle. There's no telling when war will break out, so we should get in there while we still can. Hijikata hung his head low with a bitter expression, and Shimada bowed his head apologetically. I apologize. I should have done everything to protect the chief, even if it meant giving my own life. What are you talking about? The only reason Kondo's not dead was because you busted your ass out there. However... No point in dwelling on what could have been. All that matters now is for us to take action, so his injuries don't worsen. No use crying over spilled milk. I bet he won't like this, but we're going to have to move Kondo over to Osaka Castle so he can recover in peace. While we're at it, send the sick one too. <laughs> the sick one. Hijikata's order made me gasp. Had he been talking about... What? Who are you referring to? You don't mean... Harada was sharp, so I'm sure that he'd been thinking about the same person I was. I'm talking about Soji. He has tuberculosis. I'm sure he would not have been very happy at all to be referred to as the sick one. What? 
After seeing Okita get worse and worse over the past few months, I had a feeling that was the case. So Okita officially had tuberculosis. To my knowledge, the disease was incurable. Once you've contracted it, all you could do was rest, hoping that you could do whatever it took to stave the disease progression until... <sighs> Let's figure out how we're going to get both Okita and Kondo to Osaka Castle immediately. Hijikata, who was probably more worried than anyone here, seemed focused on the future, trying to find solutions even as things seemed grim. Given the circumstances, there was no way I could insert any of my own worries into the situation. On the contrary, it motivated me to do whatever I could to help them during this rough period. After a few days had passed, and we'll find out what happens after those few days in the next video because it's time to stop here, and I think everything will be new from this point so there'll be no more skipping, I don't think at least. We'll see. I think usually in Chapter 5, since it's the actual guy's routes, I don't think there's old stuff anymore. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I have a bad memory. So anyway, yeah, hope to see you in the next episode or some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>